Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today we gather to answer Jesus' call to follow him on this, the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to visitors in our midst. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider this morning is Bishop-elect Kevin Kenny. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. As so we gather this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries, I welcome my friend, Father Jorge Canela, who's visiting from Grand Island, Nebraska, and all of you here present, those joining us by our television and live stream broadcast. We gather knowing of God's grace and mercy. Bartimaeus says, Lord, I want to see. And we in our lives as well hope to see the good that God has done in our lives. But sometimes it's darkened, sometimes it's blurred, sometimes it is taken from us. But God's grace will renew within us the great gift of love that God plants in our hearts. Lord Jesus, you heal the hearts of all the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we await your return in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north, I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deliver us, 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and the erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, in a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and said, Jesus, son of David, had pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, had pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage. Get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak and sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him and replied, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, we welcome all of you here present, those joining us by our television broadcast and live stream. It was a couple weeks back where I was in Park City, Utah. Somebody had offered me their home at the foot of the mountains out there to prepare for these days ahead. 
I arrived there at about 9.30 in the evening. Tried to get into the garage, working the code as best I could. After about 10 minutes, the door finally opened. <laughs> Got in the house and looked around. Saw there were a lot of candles around, checking out the scene. And about a half an hour into my arrival, the electricity went off. And I thought, what did I do? <laughs> I looked out the window and the whole area was dark. And fear came over me, I'm, oh, I'm in Utah. I'm at the foot of the mountain. There's wild animals out here. Somebody's gonna come in with a hatchet and kill me. <laughs> and I looked to think, where can I find light? There's candles, but where do you find matches in a house that you don't know? And I looked at my phone, it was only at 5%. I thought, well, I don't wanna waste that <laughs> in case in the middle of the night somebody comes in. <laughs> but I did text the owner and said, the lights all went off. Did I do something wrong? I never heard back from him until morning. At about 3.30 in the morning, all the lights came on. And he did text me the next morning and said, oh, I just got a notice that the electricity went off at 10.30 last night and came back on at 3.30. I hope it didn't disturb you. <laughs> so I thought about Emmaus today, a man blind. We don't know if he was born blind or if he became blind. But in the darkness, if we're not familiar with that darkness, how do we react? How do we grow into that? How do we become comfortable in that darkness? And you and I suffer from different kinds of blindness, perhaps, in our life, that we're blind to things that are happening. We're blind to what's going on in our own hearts at times because our hearts have been closed off. We're blind to what a friend, a family member, a coworker is suffering in their life. But when we are awakened, when the light comes to us, then we recognize the presence of the Lord. And so that night I decided I'll just go to bed because there's nothing else I can do. I knew where the bed was. and just said, okay, Lord, I trust that you will keep me safe. And so when we recognize how you and I are called to live into in our lives the light that is around us, we realize that we're on the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And you know what that means, correct? That there's only 34 Sundays in Ordinary Time, which you as well all know. That means we're coming to the end of this liturgical year. And we're finishing up with Mark's Gospel. And Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, is walking through the city, and Bartimaeus calls him by name. The son of David. And we recognize that Bartimaeus is the only one Jesus healed who is called by name in Mark's gospel. So at this point in our lives, how have we come to know Jesus over these past 30 weeks? This section of Mark's gospel started with Jesus healing a blind man, but never called him by name, touched him, and with Bartimaeus, who says, I want to see Jesus, son of David. All Jesus says is, go, your faith has saved you. So when we come into that relationship with Jesus Christ in our life, when we know what Jesus can do, but sometimes things get in our way. People push us away from Jesus. Our own heart, our own head, our own experience keeps us from getting to know Jesus more in our lives? Or sometimes we just don't know how. How can I know you better, Jesus? How can I receive you in my life that will renew the gifts within me? We hear today from the prophet Isaiah how God desires to bring everyone together. After an exile time, God says, I'm bringing you together to the life-giving waters, recognizing that there's challenges in life, that you and I, too, are exiled in different ways. Our world, we know, is divided in so many different ways. But we ask the Lord to bring us back, little by little. But where are those life-giving streams of water? 
Can we go down to the Mississippi and dump, scoop up a glass of water and drink it? No, we would think, oh, that's awful. 40 years ago, we may have felt more comfortable jumping in the local lakes around here, but today you think you go in, you're gonna lose a foot to all the bacteria and everything that's in the lake. What have we done? How have we been blinded to all that is happening around us? But yet we find hope, yet we find the light of the gospel that calls us. Hopefully over these last 30 weeks to come to know Jesus better in our life and to recognize that as Paul says, we are all sinners. But it is through our mistakes, through our sinfulness and God's mercy that we learn, we grow in life. So hopefully you and I are a little bit different than we were 30 weeks ago when we began the liturgical year. We've walked with the Mark and Jesus. We realize we've had to keep up with him because Jesus has moved rather quickly through this gospel. But he has touched so many people. He has healed many people. He has called many people out of the darkness into the light. And those who were open to it, as we heard, were the blind, the lame, the poor, those who are exiled out into the fringes of society. Those are the ones Jesus was able to reach. Why? Because they listened. Their hearts were opened. They knew in their heart who Jesus was, where so many others close to Jesus closed him off because he wasn't who they were expecting to come as the Messiah. And so today in our lives, we can be filled with joy, with God, the good that God has done for us, as we sang in our psalm today. Are our lives a little more joyful? Because we recognize, we can see what God is doing. And perhaps it's opened the eyes of my heart, Lord, to see in our hearts that the love of God is there. And that is perhaps where you and I have been blinded over the years, through our hurts, through our disillusionment, through just wanting to give up and block everything that's going on in the world today out. But what does our heart say? If we open the eyes of our hearts, then we recognize that you and I can have a part to bring the light of the gospel into the world as we reach out continually to those on the fringes, as we ask to heal our families, our co-workers, our communities, our nation, our world, that we can see that Jesus is present with us, that we can see that Jesus continues to heal and offers us many, many good resources, many, many graces, many, many blessings. But we need the eyes of our hearts open to that. And as Bartimaeus followed Jesus, Jesus said, go. Your faith has saved you. Did Bartimaeus walk away from Jesus? No, he walked with Jesus. Why? Because he recognized that great healing, not only a physical healing, but a spiritual healing and psychological healing that happened, that he was finally listened to, that Jesus took the time where he had been hushed for how many years, he had been pushed aside for how many years. Someone listened to him. He found that value. His eyes were opened. And so to follow Jesus, then he knew what Jesus was about to happen in Jerusalem. And he was willing to follow where all the disciples were still not getting it. They didn't understand to the fullness. They were still pushing Bartimaeus aside, others aside, to let Jesus go through. But to recognize Jesus' mission was to reach out. Jesus' mission was to be with the people and Jesus' mission is to be present in each and every one of our lives. But at times you and I push Jesus away. You and I keep Jesus out because we don't think we're worthy enough to walk that close with Jesus in our life. But Jesus gives us his body. He made that sacrifice for you and me so that we would know that love. And as we receive that in our lives, how then do we go forth? Do we walk with Jesus or do we walk away from Jesus, leaving him here on the altar, 
But if we go with Jesus out into the world, then the blessings that you and I know is we can see the hope. We can bring light into the darkness. We can see how you and I can use our gifts to bring that message with us and to be present in today's world, calling others from exile, listening, listening to others, to be compassionate, because as you and I have been forgiven, as you and I have made mistakes and we learn from them, we are not called to judge, but we're called to bring with us that compassion, that mercy that we have received in our life as well. And so hopefully as we go into these next few weeks, as we close out this liturgical year, we can pray today, Lord, open the eyes of my heart so I can see where this journey has brought me, what this journey is calling forth from me, and how I then can be a light of the gospel message in the dark areas of today's world to bring some kind of sense to the confusion, to the mystery, to the wonder that is out there. And that in my life, I know the presence in word, in the sacrament, in the love of God, that you are present with me in my life. And I can come to you crying out, Jesus, Lord, Son of David. And when Jesus says, what? What? What do you want from me? That we're able to say, Lord, I want to see. Lord, I need this healing. Lord, I need to know your presence in my life. The purpose for why I'm here yet, to continue to share in what you have given to us. And in that prayer, then yes, open the eyes of our hearts to see around us the great need, the great blessings, and most of all, the great presence that God is still with us that Jesus walks with us and the Holy Spirit will continue to move us. And together, let us proclaim that in which we do believe. I believe in one God. God is compassionate towards those with needs. Let us pray with confidence. That all members of the church may have the faith to come confidently to Jesus when in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of the world, may they have faith to seek salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop-elect Kevin Kenny, may he be attentive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us in being a voice of hope and hands of justice so we may build up together a sign of Christ's love in the heart of the city. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the disciples of Jesus gathered here today, 
May we have the courage to reach out to the broken and the needy, to welcome the outcasts in our community. We pray to the Lord. May the Holy Spirit heal those who are sick or injured, especially those mentioned in our prayer ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be counted with those that God gathers into his kingdom to dwell with God forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, you sent your spirit to dwell with us and guide us in the way of justice and faithfulness. Hear our prayers that we might stay rooted in your way. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice and your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the Church. Look, O Lord, we pray the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain and an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of the reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Pope Francis, Bishop Vernon, the order of bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you had gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered through all the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles' peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a humble sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's announcements. The top three needs for Samaritan ministries include winter coats, backpacks, bedding, and towels. Items may be dropped off the next time you are here at St. Olaf, and we thank you for your support. This coming Friday, November 1st, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, a holy day of obligation. Masses here will be the Vigil Mass at 5.15 p.m. on Thursday, on Friday, 7 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, and 5.15. This coming Saturday is the commemoration of all the faithful departed, all souls. We will remember and celebrate those who have gone before us. We will name the members of our community who have died this past year during the 12 noon mass on Saturday, November 2nd. You're all welcome to join us in the celebration, either live stream or in person, or at MCN Cable Channel 6 this evening, 7 o'clock p.m. will be the Vesper service, the solemn Vespers in anticipation of my Episcopal ordination as Auxiliary Bishop of St. Paul, Minneapolis. Vespers will be about one hour in length, followed by a cupcake coffee reception. And then tomorrow at one o'clock at the Cathedral of St. Paul, you're all invited to join us for the Episcopal ordination. The ordination will be approximately two hours in length and a public reception will follow at the Cathedral. And next Sunday, November 3rd, I will have a Mass of Thanksgiving here at St. Olaf at 12 noon. All a parish-wide celebration will follow as well. You're all welcome to attend that. And on Monday, tomorrow, after the 7 a.m. Mass and Confessions, the church will be closed and locked to allow everyone here to go over to St. Paul. And if you did sign up for a bus, be sure to be here on time to catch the bus to go over to the cathedral. So I'm looking forward to these next two days. A little, a little nervous, yeah. but <laughs> God is good. God's grace will be there. But the blessing being an auxiliary bishop of St. Paul, Minneapolis means that I will stay here. So the fear is always, where are they sending you to? Nowhere, I'm staying here in the heart of the city in Minneapolis, which is a blessing for me. And I hope for all of you. <laughs> so you're all welcome to join us for coffee and donuts in the gathering room after Mass today. And we thank you. Thank you for your presence here, your support of St. Olaf that you offer in so many ways. Always those of you here present and those join us on our television broadcast and live stream. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.